One of the first things we do when we deploy the Palo Alto firewall is to enable NET or Network Address Translation. This is what allows us to hide the internal subnet where the users are located to access the internet. So, for example, in this scenario, we have the internal subnet uh, using the IP address 10.100/24, and when they try to access the internet through the firewall, they're going to be uh, hidden or translated to the public IP address on the firewall. In this case, I'm using the subnet 116.8. Uh, 10/24, and the firewall has the IP address 1.168.1.1. So from the internet or on this side, the resources, the routers, the users, they are unaware of this subnet 10.1.0.0. This type of translation is also referred to as PAT or port address translation because all of the IP address on this subnet, I believe 254, or even if we had a different subnet, they all would use the same IP address on this firewall. And we can test this real quick. So let me bring the this PC. So let's go to Linux 5. And I have configured like a basic policy just allowing uh, all the subnet 10.1.1.0.0 to access the internet so I'm going to log into this PC and I should be able to ping the ISP router that has the IP address 1.168.1.7 and I also enable telnet on the router so we log in and run the command show users we can see that this client PC this Linux 5 is arriving on the ISP router with the IP address 116811 and that's the outside or the external IP address on the firewall. Now let's do the same test from this Linux 6. Okay, I'm going to log in. Okay, and let me close this and yep, I can close this and log in to the router as well. If I run the command show users, we can see that both PCs, they are arriving or connecting to the router, but they arriving with the same IP address 116811. Now, there are scenarios where we might be required to allow access from the internet to our internal subnet. An example would be if we had to allow access uh, to this server. So let's suppose this is our web server. Okay, and we want this web server to be reachable uh, from any device on these other subnets. So 116.820 or 116.830. So more specifically, we want this Linux 13 to be able to reach this web server. Now, the way to do that is by using a different type of net. And that's going to be static net. Okay, O101 translation. So we want to make sure that the IP address that this web server has, in this case, that's going to be the 101114, to be not reachable on the internet, but to be mapped to an IP address on the public subnet. So in this case, we want that this web server that has the private IP address 101114 to be translated to a public IP address 116814, for example. Because we know that on this direction, we are using this public subnet, so 116810/24. So I just chose the IP any on 14 just to make it easier to associate. So we want that clients, let's suppose Linux 13, he, whenever he calls these 116.8.1.14, the firewall redirects this or translate to the internal IP address of the web server 10.1.1.14. And this is what we're going to see in this video, how to configure static net translation on the Palo Alto firewall. As a reference, I'll be using this document from Palo Alto and I'll share the link to this document in the video description. So essentially, this is going to act as my Linux 
13. So this is the client sitting on the internet. And at my DMZ, this is where I have the Linux 14 with the IP address 10, 1, 1, 14. Okay. And we want this client Linux PC or Linux 13 to access the web server on the subnet 1.16810/24 or precisely on the IP address 1.68114 okay so this document it's uh, explained in great detail how to do this and they actually have an example here on what we have to do so essentially we have to configure the state NAT policy on the firewall and then we have to create the security policy that will allow the traffic from the internet to the DMZ. Okay, let's take a look at what I have configured so far. Uh, if we go to network, we should have only two interfaces. So I'm using interface one slash one and one slash three with two zones, right? Inside zone and the outside zone. As for policies, nothing complex, uh, quite basic and simple. So we have one rule allowing uh, traffic coming from the inside zone on the subnet 1010. So this is an object that I created and going to the outside zone on any destination. And this time I'm using the application uh, to be specific as to which applications I'm going to allow on the firewall. In this case, I'm just using ICMP, ping, telnet and web browsing okay so in order to uh, make this uh, linux pc reachable on the internet so we have to configure the firewall with the interface ip address the zone the net policy and the security policy rule as well so let's begin by configuring the interface by going to network interfaces and we're going to select the interface one slash two as you can see i'm using one slash two connect to dmz uh so virtual router is going to be default and i'm going to create a new security zone so we're going to name this as dmz zone and i'm going to save this okay now let's go to ipv4 add so the ip address is going to be 24 okay and i'm just going to enable associate uh interface management profile so that in case i have to troubleshoot reachability between the server and the firewall just to allow ping on the interface and i'm going to save this uh, potentially yeah no problem okay the interface is done so now let's go to policies and here on the policy let's go to net and first we have to create the net policy so we're going to add a new net policy and let's just take a look at the name so destination at web server from untrust to untrust any source web server so that's going to be web server public ip address and then the destination translates to the web server private ip address okay so probably that's what i remember destination i'm just going to translate uh access to web server can't remember all of that so the original ip packet so this is going to come from the outside zone and the destination has to be also the outside zone now the source address is going to be any now the destination address it has to be the public ip address of the server so we're going to create a new object here and let's name this as web server public IP and the public IP is going to be 1168114 and that's going to be just a host IP address I'm going to save this okay so now on translated packets the destination address translation we want it to be translated to the private IP address of the web server. So we're going to select state IP address and translate the address. We're going to create a new object. We're going to call this as web server um, private IP. Normally I don't use underscores, but anyway. So the public IP is going to be uh, 101114 
it's just going to be a host as well so we're going to save this okay so web server private ip original packet that's going to be web server public ip okay we're going to save this next we should go to security and we're going to add a new security role and we're going to name this as web access just web server access now the source this is going to be from the outside zone and the source address is going to be any and the source user all of this we're going to leave as default as for destination this is going to be dmz this has to be where the web server is physically located so that's going to be dmz and the destination address that's going to be the public ip address of the web server okay as for application so just going to select uh web browsing okay service category we're going to leave this default just make sure that it's set to allow and it's done okay so let's double check so i'm allowing traffic from the outside zone to the dmz zone on the web server public ip address let me just adjust the columns the web server public ip address application web browsing and i'm allowing service application default okay that should be enough so let's commit those changes and then we're going to test it okay the changes were committed successfully so let's test this so let's bring linux 13 and let's go to the public ip address and that should be 1168114 okay and it works so let's just send some traffic and now let's go back to the firewall so we should see some hit counts there uh, so yeah we have 25 hits there and if we go to the net policy we should see also some hit counts there just to make sure that it's working and if we go to monitor okay let me adjust the column so we can see that coming from the outside zone to the dmz zone the source is the uh the linux 13 1168313 uh the destination is uh 1168114 on port 80 web browsing and it's allowing so this is it guys this is how you enable state night or 101 translation on the palo alto firewall if you took value from this video don't forget to subscribe hit the like button and i'll see you on the next one